you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Heidi, and I am joined by the wonderful Ariane. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. We will be talking about the lovely topic, a topic that unfortunately many in America are well aware of. We are talking about some health issues related to being overweight and being obese. And I am specifically going to be referencing a article that was put out by the Huffington Post. Um, I've looked through this article. It's pretty lengthy and it was pretty popular on social media as well. They had some really great photos that went along with it um, that I really enjoyed. And they went into some anecdotes. Um, the, inter the author interviewed some people talking about their experience with obesity mm -hmm. and um, some of the ways they felt uh, society had treated them. And in particular, this article was saying that the way that we view obesity and the way that we view people who are obese is incorrect. Right. And I felt that was interesting. I think probably personally convicting for me in some ways. Um, but I'm just going to start off with some facts that they gave to kind of set the stage. And I'm sure as we're all aware, cases of obesity in America have been on the rise. They are quoted in this article of saying that more Americans live with extreme, extreme obesity than with breast cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and HIV put together. That's crazy. It is insane. And I'm sure I'll be saying throughout this podcast how crazy these stats are <laughs> yeah. because it was overwhelming and, and sad, actually. Because as long they also said that not just America, but as our world as a whole, cases of obesity are on the rise, and mm -hmm. there hasn't been... A nation that has really found a way to curb this growth right and i just that was just depressing <laughs> it was i i liked this article actually because i've always heard that you know just because someone is overweight there they can still be healthy mm -hmm. um, my aunt is an rn and she would tell us this all the time when i was like in seventh eighth grade so she'd be like just because people look like they're overweight they can be healthy on the inside and i would be like okay if you say so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's and that's what i really felt was great about this article and what made it interesting not just like health facts that i felt like i heard in school and what the one of the things they were saying is that America basically obsessed, uh, obsesses over weight, mm -hmm. and that also affects children. Children obsess over their own weight, and um, one of the things they said is nearly half of three to six-year-old girls say they worry about being fat. That's so sad. It's three years old. That's right. so depressing. I've heard of little kids say that too. Yeah, and I think it's yeah. with all like the social media imaging that you see that's not even real at that, and these girls are held to that standard. Right. Yeah, I agree. And I just, uh, it was just I'm going to keep saying it. That was just really sad. <laughs> um, but <laughs> one of the things they were pointing out is that just because that they were saying on average, overweight people have worse cardiovascular health, but generally speaking, like exercise, diet, and overall lifestyle are better indicators of overall health and health risks, such as diabetes uh -huh. and like how diabetes is often associated with being overweight. And while that may be the case on average, that doesn't necessarily, that can't just be like your one deciding factor just by like looking at someone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just as you were saying, and I, I think I found this interesting in the sense that I probably judge people too harshly. And after reading this article, I felt like I needed to like check myself mm -hmm. um, just before thinking things like this. And it, and it also, it made sense. Like overall lifestyle would be a better indicator of your health. Right. Because and you, you don't know someone's lifestyle. Exactly. And I don't... Um 
I don't really judge people on that level just because I have one of my best friends. Well, she is like my best friend um, back in Utah. Mm -hmm. She was on the, so what they call the morbidly obese level. Mm -hmm. Um, But she had to get the gastro bypass and the um, weight loss surgeries to help her. And that's what I don't think people really understand is because they're not, sometimes they're not just overweight because they eat so much or something like that. Like her thyroid um wasn't functioning properly so it made it harder for her to lose weight right um and the the weight just stayed on there so i don't think that we really look at that too because there might be a reason that not just because you know they just eat unhealthy that they're overweight like there could be a deeper meaning behind that you know what i mean yeah and i i definitely felt that that article addressed that i wouldn't say as directly as maybe i would have liked like talking about some of those specific Mm -hmm. health issues that can cause um being overweight but they did say that like a lot of times those who are overweight sometimes will avoid like going to the doctor or something which can cause more risk but they avoid going because they feel like doctors judge them immediately based on appearance just by looking at a patient before even trying to figure out what might be the cause of that obesity Mm -hmm. or like what is someone's like eating habits or exercise habits or like family health or things that you can't like no just by looking at someone or um experiencing the truth about you know what's going on Mm -hmm. like underneath the skin you know what i mean because sometimes that's hard to hear too and you just it's just scary to hear Mm -hmm. so you're just like i don't really want to know and if i'm fine right now then you know i'll just hold off from going to the doctor you know right yeah and i feel like that was someone that was difficult to hear of a lot of people saying in like anecdotes throughout this article saying that they felt shame of even going to a health professional yeah that's so sad i was just i was i was very saddened by that but i could definitely see that like you sometimes you don't want that news um or condescending look right and they were also saying like sometimes doctors do feel like they are doing what is right by kind of like a tough love type of thing or like Mm -hmm. something that they they feel might help a patient that they view is overweight saying like oh like you need to just do this like you need to lose weight and sometimes they can say that a patient needs to lose weight and that the weight is the cause of their illness without Mm -hmm. even looking into what might actually be the cause of their illness which is just really unprofessional it really is because them being the doctors they should know these patients their patients like health history Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. so for them to just like try this tough love thing i don't feel like that's very fair because if you know your patient's health history you know why they're obese or um they're unhealthy in any way and for you to just be like well you just do this you know you have to do this like oh well why don't you talk to them be like well maybe if we can switch one thing at a time Mm -hmm. or take baby steps let's get you through this you know what i mean right yeah for sure and they were saying that medical students receive an average of just 19 hours of nutrition education over four years of instruction which is actually five year five hours fewer than they got in 2006 and sometimes that can cause like trouble in practice Uh especially because most of the time doctors only get like 15 minutes or so with a patient and so if someone comes in not necessarily for their weight and they just come in for other issues Uh a doctor is encouraged by the medical system to always talk to a patient about their weight but they might not have the time in an appointment to go over like nutrition or exercise or to figure out what is going on right right Uh, okay but the system is often wanting doctors to do that and I also read in this article that sometimes before they even see a patient, like when they're going through like when a patient is with like nurses and getting like height and weight and blood pressure and Uh everything before a doctor even sees them, a like little thing will pop up on their notes that this patient is overweight and it encourages them to talk about that patient's weight. Okay. Is it like an automatic thing or does like the nurse say something or type something like a quick message? I wasn't sure. I feel like this article was saying like if doctors have like electronic uh-huh. um, like records of someone that will pop up. But like if they're briefing themselves before seeing the patient on the computer or something, that'll pop up. Okay. But I'm sure that also happens like if a nurse just goes to the doctor and says right. that. Okay. You know, it's like I can hear them talking about me before they come into my appointment <laughs> room. Sure. So I'm sure they say a lot of things about other patients. Exactly. Um, and also one of the things that is related to 
people who are overweight not wanting to go to the doctor is that oftentimes people who are overweight who suffer from anorexia uh, actually suffer longer than those who may be a lot skinnier than them. Mm. And that is sometimes because our society has had like the idea of like, this is what an anorexic person looks like. So you may not be able to spot anorexia in someone who is overweight, but they still suffer from right. anorexia. Like it's not just physical, it's also mental. It is, yes. And so sometimes they avoid, like they don't get that disease treated or diagnosed by a doctor or by others around them because the doctor might still not see anorexia. Mm -hmm. Like if a patient goes in and says like, oh, I'm not eating. Like there were so many sad stories of a patient going in and being like, I'm not eating. And basically the patient feeling like the doctor was encouraging that to lose what? weight. Yeah. And I, <sighs> I've seen, um, and on another note on the anorexia thing, I've seen mm -hmm. websites that encourage the, um, the whole anorexia thing. Like, I don't know. And, and just like seeing the pictures, I've seen some pictures on articles and these, um, people are so skinny and, mm -hmm. and then the comments are like, you look so wonderful. Um, keep going and all this stuff is right, like, no, right. because these people might die soon. That's horrible. Why would right. you encourage that? And they like often will have like body dysmorphia, I think is what it's called, yes. where they're not seeing themselves as that way. Right. And then to have other people who are seeing them like truly and then telling them that like that's. And that's, that's a true, so harmful. That's a, that's a true thing too, because my best friend, she still sees herself as the bigger person mm -hmm. she was. And even I've told her, I'm like, wow, you've lost so much weight. I never really, I told her, I never really noticed how big she was until after her surgery. And then I went back and looked at pictures of mm -hmm. us together and, you know, um, just nights that we chilled. And then recently, and I'm like, holy wow and she's like no see i still see that person when i look in the mirror and i was like that is crazy because we share the same size shirt now you know right yeah a lot of people do have that and especially people who go through surgery like that mm -hmm. where it's so sudden they often don't see themselves like that exactly yeah so we're going to take a quick break quick break and then we're going to come back and keep talking still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. So we are going to continue talking about our topic of obesity and some of the ways that that is viewed in society. And one of the things that I thought was interesting about this article, um, the specific Huffington Post article, was that people who were uh, overweight often said that they were discriminated against in the workplace. And like mm -hmm. when you apply to a job or things like that, they always have a disclaimer, you know, like we don't discriminate against like ethnicity or gender. And actually, Michigan is the only state that prohibits workplace discrimination based on weight. Wow. There is no other um, state that has any regulation like that. Go ahead, Michigan. I know. I was like, good for you. But unfortunately, there is a stigma typically against people who are overweight. And apparently research has found that larger Americans, especially larger women, earn lower salaries and consistently find um, that they get hired less and promoted less mm. than others. Mm -mm. And I was just uh, like, like, if you just really want to like stack on <laughs> the like discrimination yeah. that is already added, like along with already society and like bullying and comments, exactly. you don't need that in the workplace. And I also another thing related to this is that fat shaming and other bullying can actually decrease life expectancy and can cause other mental health issues. Like the the person that's the victim of the bullying, yes, or of the fat yeah. shaming. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know that it had a an effect on your the length of life. I don't know how they studied this because like longevity studies are really difficult to do mm -hmm. but they just said it can definitely affect mental health and i'm sure this oh, can course. probably contribute to other things like depression or just like mm -hmm. low self-esteem right. which can also affect um 
physical health and exactly. longevity. Uh-huh. And one of the things that I thought was very interesting is they quoted a researcher who studies stigma at UCLA. Okay. And she said that essentially we as like a culture in an evolutionary standpoint are trained to look at bodies that look different than ours in a negative way. Like if you were in a tribe and someone looked different from you, uh-huh. they could be seen as a threat or someone who oh. might be sick or there's like a reason they look different and that could be uh, have a negative impact on you. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I like I was like that makes sense. And it's because they said children often the one the thing that children use the most to bully other children is weight. Yeah. More than anything else. And mm-hmm. I think they said that's kind of like not like as an excuse about it, but that it is sort of ingrained in some of our biology yeah. that that would be like an early thing that kids would use to bully others. And they even did some studies where like children were trained or not trained, but taught about obesity and about like health issues related to weight and things like that. Mm-hmm. And were able to actually repeat facts back about like this main, you know, like mm. obesity is not always the fault of the person who is obese and right. things like that. But then once they were released back onto the playground, they still made fun of other children who were overweight. And I was like, that's so sad. Yeah. How does that help then? I I think they were kind of trying to say that this is like a problem with our children, but also a problem with society. Uh And like if you see an adult doing this or like viewing someone who is obese negatively, Uh that can also increase uh, children being bullies towards other people who are obese or overweight mm. and i just uh that's like so sad that children already do that <laughs> like it at is such an early age it is and they're already like like three to six already be concerned about being fat oh gosh it's the, the little girl's um view on what's you know socially acceptable mm-hmm. is is, mm-hmm. is hard anyway my daughter's um sister from um her dad's side is like that too she'll like the parents well the grandparents will tell her well you're just a little chunky thing or um you eat too much and then when she came to stay with me Uh, one time she was just like oh no i just eat too much so that's just all i was like who told you that i was like girl if you hungry eat okay that's what you're supposed to do you are a growing child you need that in your body right right i felt so bad for her i was like when you live with me you eat what you want and don't even feel bad about it okay right for sure and i feel like it's also like the responsibility of a parent just to make sure you're eating like good food exactly you know like you shouldn't like a child should not be concerned about how much food they're eating (laughs) Mm -hmm. they should not yeah, as long as you just get like healthy eating habits, like I don't know. Right, and either way, they're growing up anyway. Right, she's exactly. definitely the kid that's you know, oh, she's gonna stretch out of that, and it's gonna like it's just like baby weight, you know. Right, for sure. And I could see how like that type of like being taught that as a child yep. would just contribute to future issues mm-hmm. about your body, and that's uh, that's so sad to hear. Poor girls, boys get that too, though, especially oh, yeah, with the bullies. Sure. I think it's harder than on them, not probably at home, but at school. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing that this article pointed out is that sometimes like being in a minority group, you can often feel a sense of like community or a sense of belongingness to those who are like you or in that same minority group. Okay. But scientists were saying that with those who are obese, that's not necessarily the case. And some of that is internalized like... I have a, I should not be overweight mm. and I should not look like this. And a lot of other people like that they quoted who were overweight said that they view other people who are overweight like also negatively. Really? So it's not creating a sense of there's not like a sense of community amongst people who are overweight. Oh, that's sad. I know. And I was like that's so, like they were saying like someone who is like gay has like a moment of coming out. And they said that never happens to someone who's like overweight. Well, you know, because it's more obvious, I think yeah, it's more, yeah. you know, obvious to see that somebody is overweight than, you know, to catch the, um, someone who's homosexual to just be like, oh, I'm like this. Cause some of those you can just tell, you mm-hmm. know, not that it's a bad thing, but to actually say it to their families is hard enough, but right. you know, you don't really need to tell your family, Hey, I think I'm overweight when you can obviously see if you're, you are, or you're not. Right. But, and I think, yeah. And they were saying mm-hmm. like, there's never a moment of like pride of like accepting how your body is or who Uh, you are you know i I think that needs to be taught to everybody though because it's like you are who you are and just be happy if you don't like it there's always a way that you yourself can change it Mm -hmm. um even if it's like a health concern like if there's the reason why that you you can't lose weight then you know go to the doctor figure out how you can um get the situation handled you know what i mean 
Right, right. And I think just like the idea of empowerment is so important for anyone, you mm-hmm. know, in any individual. And like, yeah, like you were saying, like the if you have an issue or you feel like this is a health concern, like you should be able to feel like you can address it, but yes. you shouldn't feel bad about yourself. Exactly, you know? exactly. Nobody should feel bad about what they, you know, that, who they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. Another stat related to this um, that they were saying that since 1980, the obesity rate has doubled in 73 countries and increased in 113 others. And although no nation has really figured out how to reduce this rate, they have seen that like diet is the leading cause of cause of death in the United States and is responsible for more than five times the fatalities of gun violence and car accidents combined. That's that's an interesting stat because, you know, if, if it's increased the whole time, then, you know, it would be more, you would think that it would be more socially acceptable right. if it's increasing in all these countries. It's like, oh, that's what it's supposed to do. Right. Yeah. And I think that's definitely what this article is trying to get at is like, this is a, a growing problem and we still treat people this way badly, even though there are more and more and more people right. who are struggling with this, you know, and I think that was something that I'm really glad they pointed out is that we have all of these kind of like sad and depressing facts yet still we haven't really addressed it as a culture and we still kind of view it negatively or kind of just put the blame on the person who's overweight Mm -hmm. and just expect them to change themselves. But I actually like the um, fact that a lot of, um, what are they called models? They're Mm -hmm. doing a lot more plus size models. Um, as far as, you know, getting comfortable with who you are, like I see a lot of those in magazines now and, um, online ads for their clothes or, you know, whatever that they will have, you know, your stereotypical, you know, tall, gorgeous model, but then they'll also have, you know, this, um, plus size and they're gorgeous also. Mm -hmm. So, um, I like seeing that too, just for them to be comfortable with who they are. And, every, and right. you know, they're not alone. Right. Yeah. I've also noticed that. And especially like in clothing stores mm-hmm. where they'll have sections like plus size, but as opposed to it just being like, oh, plus size, like they'll have like some really great like posters and like pictures of models and everything. And they like, I feel like stores are trying to make it more normalized and more acceptable and more like beautiful yeah. as opposed to just having like a little section in the corner, mm-hmm. you know, exactly with like no advertising. Right. Or where you have to go ask like the clerk, do you have this in like a double right. X or something like right. all on the hush hush. I like that, that they're putting it out there. Like, no, you're, you're, you're cool. You look good. Feel good. Right. You're not like trying to like smuggle something yeah. bad in the store <laughs> exactly. you're just trying to get clothes right yeah i have definitely appreciated that all right we're going to take one last break and then we will come back and talk about some diet and exercise prevention tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. So I would like to clarify that we will be talking in this section about diet and exercise that can help prevent weight gain and health uh, promotion. So one of the (laughs) things that they pointed out that can help promote good health and overall well-being is that a major source to look at and to concentrate on is diet. 
mm-hmm. and they said what you should be concentrating on is nutrition and not necessarily the calories that are in food. Okay. So there are like some types of foods that like you should be considering more and certain like health benefits of certain foods. Mm-hmm. For instance, um, they said that people who eat nuts are like four times a week have a 12% lower diabetes, like instances of diabetes and a 13% lower mortality rates, um, regardless of weight. I like that because I just, uh, recently have a newfound taste for almonds. Oh yeah. Almonds are great. (laughs) When I was a kid, I hated them. I was like, no, I'm not eating those. They're just nasty. But now I'm like, oh, a little bit of salted. Those are pretty good. (laughs) Slightly (laughs) roasted. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. I really, I really appreciated how specific this one fact was. (laughs) I was like, all right, well, I'll increase the amount of, you know, mixed nuts that I'm consuming. Exactly. All right. That's good to know. Um, they were also saying that if someone is going in for care, like um, nutrition counseling or any sort of counseling related to weight, mm-hmm. that they were stressing empathetic care. So oh, as opposed like to just like someone saying you need to lose weight. They were saying like empathetic care where someone can really spend some time to talk about what you eat and to understand maybe some of the causes of your weight gain there sort of go. someone like a between like a counselor and a dietitian so you don't get that just doctor tough love you need to do this thing. right right oh i like that yeah and they they said that those who are seeing people who are more empathetic to their weight gain have like a longer track record of sticking to a good diet mm-hmm. and actually losing weight and actually sticking to an exercise program which makes complete sense right you and know? I, yeah i saw this um this one guy who was a personal trainer and this probably wasn't very good on his health or body in general, but every new person he got, he would just take on one client at a time and he would gain as much weight as they're at. Like, um, the woman was at like 300 and like 20 pounds. And so when he met her, he was like nice and fit. So he gained up to, to where he was at her level and they lost the weight together. Whoa. Yeah. As a, like, as a motivation to be like, look, if I can do it, you can do it. Like, let's do this together. Not just, you know, some fit person telling you, oh, keep pushing, keep pushing. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's not very healthy on his body specifically to keep gaining and losing all a bunch of weight. But I thought that was kind of cool that he was willing to do that for his you know, clients. Right. Did you see this like at a gym or on TV? Or it was actually a documentary on, oh. um, I think it was on Netflix or Hulu or I don't know. One of those, you know, ones you don't have to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We know those. <laughs> oh, huh. I mean, that's definitely a way to connect to a client. I haven't thought about that. I mean, right. yeah, I don't know how well that was for his, how good that was for his health, but I could definitely see that being helpful as mm-hmm. someone trying to lose weight, yeah. you know, because that's always frustrating if someone's like, oh, just like do it like this. And it's like, well, it's so easy for you. Yeah. Now look at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, they were saying, though, that unfortunately, often insurance will not cover more empathetic care, you know, because it's not as cost efficient. You have to go mm-hmm. for like longer periods of time and it takes longer. So that's that's really unfortunate. <laughs> it is. It is, too, because uh, and I don't like those healthcare services. They're like, oh, well, this happened when you were 16, so we don't cover that. And you're like, wait, right, what? Right, exactly. Like, you're supposed to cover, like, my life. <laughs> exactly. And um, they did say that the United States spends $1.5 billion on nutrition research every year, compared to around $60 billion on drug research. Oh, and just, wow. like, 4% of agricultural subsidies goes to fruit and vegetables, whereas way more goes to, you know, like, corn, flour, mm-hmm. and sugar. And like those types of things are like oil production, which like, and you wonder uh, why they, the, um, obesity percentage has gone up so much right? in all these countries, not just our own, you know? Right. It's like, where are we focusing our efforts? Exactly. And, um, so a final part that, um, I just want to talk about as like weight, uh, prevention and a healthy lifestyle is they mentioned exercise. Unfortunately, in our society, we have a very sedentary lifestyle, long commutes and like lack of public transport and like suburban sprawl, you know, where it just takes you longer to get to like the city, maybe where you work or Mm -hmm. something like that. And that a bunch of Americans work sitting down Mm -hmm. and they were saying only 13 percent of American children walk or bike to school and that once they arrive at school, less than a third of them will take part in a daily gym class. Wow. Which is sad. I mean, I was required to take gym. Right. You had to run. Right. There was exactly. no, you can't run unless you had actually brought in a doctor's note because your leg was broken right. or, you know, some other severe health concern. Because I even um, 
when I would be like, oh, I can't breathe, they'd be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you walk the mile, then you yeah, don't have exactly. to run it, but you can walk it still. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, I feel like yeah, they were always like, well, you're just gonna have to walk it. It's exactly. gonna take you twice as long. But you still had to do it though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know what schools these kids are going to. They're but- so lucky. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> as we're over here being super uh, lazy <laughs> it was yeah you you guys don't know oh. the mile <laughs> oh gosh like yeah. every week <laughs> um and they were also saying that there are some weight intervention programs that can actually be helpful for kids and they said that although they might not immediately reduce obesity they do actually increase like lifestyle choices like increased athletic ability okay. increased like time spent exercising reduced like tv consumption and actually all of that correlates to like improved test scores as oh, well nice so they were saying that like sometimes the results that maybe like the government is looking for of just decreased obesity may not necessarily be the result but that there are still some positive impacts right that there's these benefits in have. other areas yeah for sure That's awesome yeah and that was encouraging that like some of those programs are working in that sense um they also said that there's a correlation in developing countries where there's higher wages for women there's actually lower obesity rates oh okay so it's like all right pay well, us more i know so it's about <laughs> time you guys noticed the right <laughs> Um, they also said that there was a pilot program in Massachusetts that gave food stamp recipients an extra 30 cents for every dollar they spent on healthy foods. And uh-huh. that increased vegetable and fruit consumption by about like 26%. I, I like, like that. Oh, I think that's really good. That makes sense to me. Yeah, All of these things, I'm like, that makes sense. Right, Unfortunately, given, that right. may not result in data that they like, but you know. Benefits in other areas are still good too, though. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like super important ones that may not be quantitative right but then they're also like a gateway so like if you get more money for spending on fruits and vegetables then it's like oh you eat healthier which Mm -hmm. is in turn eventually might help you lose some weight Mm -hmm. or get a little bit healthier and even with like the exercise even if you're just um doing it little by little you'll want to later on maybe build up more right yeah and just general like you know like lifestyle choices and like how you choose to like raise your kids like emphasizing fruits and vegetables or exercise right and that's super important um also finally they were saying viewing yourself and viewing yourself in society like the most important thing that you can have um just to help yourself be healthier is self-empowerment and kind of saying like if you are overweight or if you are obese saying like this is who i am and that's okay and right. like asserting yourself and saying like actually i want maybe like i need like a booth with like more space at the table to sit as opposed to just like a chair in a restaurant mm-hmm. you know or something just like asserting yourself does lead to a healthier life right and being able to like say like i'm okay with where i am right and, i'm you know, comfortable with myself right, exactly and like maybe i need to work on some of these things but until then i'm right. okay and acknowledging that too is just like yeah i know who i am you don't have to remind me Mm -hmm. thank you (laughs) Mm -hmm. for sure for sure and just i think as we kind of said like more body positive clothing lines Mm -hmm. um and i know like some weight loss companies have actually rebranded themselves sort of not focusing as much on weight loss but more of like a healthy lifestyle Mm -hmm. which i think is all very positive yeah so definitely in support of all of those things um and i just you know you should feel good about yourself. Exactly. Should all be the empowered. time. All the time. All the time. So thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you guys later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program